Hello guys, Dr. Hasbullah here and now let's carry on with our derivation of the turbo machinery equation. Okay, and in the last video, you've end up with this equation, right? And now let's carry on and see what we can do with this equation. Now, if we take a look again at our velocity triangle here, right? We can actually use the cosine law to simplify the equation. So looking at this figure, if I'm focusing on alpha 1, so that means V1 square will equal to u1 square plus v1 square minus 2 u1 v1 cos alpha 1, isn't it? So similarly with the velocity triangle at outlet, I can get v2 equal to u2 square plus v2 square minus 2 u2 v2 cos alpha 2. Okay, so what if I simply copy this equation and bring it down here? Right, and now if you notice, we have a few similar terms here that is u1 v1 and u2 v2 cos alpha, and that is here. Right, and we need that in order to simplify the equation for ht. Okay, so what we are going to do is that I'm going to write here u1 v1 cos alpha 1 will equal to u1 square plus v1 square minus small v1 square divide by 2 right and u2 v2 cos alpha 2 from this equation is going to be u2 square plus v2 square minus small v2 square divide by 2 okay and if i use this and plug it there, I'm going to get ht equal to v1 square minus v2 square divided by 2 plus u2 square minus u1 square minus v2 square minus v1 square divided by 2g. Okay, this is 2g. Okay, and this is another very important equation. Let's just highlight it first. Okay, and now I'm going to couple this equation with Bernoulli equation with pump head, right? Bernoulli equation looks something like this. This is P1 over rho g plus V1 square over 2g plus H1 or plus Z1. Let's use Z here equal to p2 over rho g plus v2 square over 2g plus z2 okay and when you have pump head inside the Bernoulli equation remember that pump will add energy into the fluid so ht is sitting on the left hand side that's your ht so from this Bernoulli equation i'm going to get ht equal to p2 minus p1 over rho g plus v2 square minus v1 square over 2g plus z2 minus z1 right so now from Bernoulli equation i'll have another equation for ht so i suppose you know what i'm about to do now which is equating these two equation right so equating these two equation and let's see what will happen so definitely ht will go away right let's see what we can do from here so ht will go away and this term will definitely go right so this is v2 square minus v1 square i think i may have made a mistake here this is supposed to be v2 minus v1 right so v2 minus v1 so that's why this term will cancel out each other now let's rearrange the remaining term in a logical manner and what i want to do is that i want the inlet condition to the left hand side of the equation and the exit condition to the right hand side so that will be p1 okay let's do this this is p1 over rho g plus z1 plus v1 small v1 square minus u1 square over 2g equal to p2 over rho g plus z2 plus 
V2 minus, so this is V2 square minus U2 square over 2G. Okay, now I have number 1 on the left hand side and number 2 on the right hand side of the equation. And of course, this is equal to constant, right? And if you notice as well, condition 1 and condition 2 for a pump happens in the impeller, right? So for the impeller, the H or the Z is almost negligible. Right, the difference in Z is almost negligible. I mean, it's negligible compared to the pressure difference that the fluid will experience. So to make things simple, we're just gonna neglect it. And this means you will end up with the equation that looks something like this, which is P1 minus P2 equal to rho, this is rho over two, V1 square minus U1 square minus V2 square minus U2 square. Okay, so there you go. This is what you call the pressure difference, right? So the pressure difference between the exit of the impeller and the inlet of the impeller can be determined when you know, of course, when you know the density, right? And when you also know the relative velocity and you know the velocity of the blade and the relative velocity at exit and velocity of the blade at exit then you know the pressure difference between the inlet and exit of the impeller. Now, coming back to this equation, right, coming back to this equation, okay, and to make things simpler, I'm just going to write it again. It's, gonna, it's getting quite messy here. So, HT is equal to U2 V2 cos alpha 2 minus U1 V1 cos alpha 1 divided by g and remember that ht is the theoretical pressure head so in a pump the higher the ht the better it is the more power that it's got okay so how do you maximize ht from this equation definitely that means that if you make this term to go to zero then ht is going to be maximum isn't it Okay, so what's the best thing to make that term zero? Of course, you're gonna set the alpha equal to 90 degrees, right? So alpha, so alpha 90 degrees, so cos alpha equal to zero, right? So that makes the term zero. So what happens if alpha one equal to 90 degrees? Now let's go back to our velocity triangle here. So when alpha one equal to 90 degrees, our velocity triangle simply looks, will simply look something like this. Let me draw this on top of the velocity triangle. So if alpha one is 90 degrees, so here will be your V1, this is your small V1 and this is your U1. Right, so alpha here will be 90 degrees. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like in terms of velocity triangle when you change the alpha. And now you know that from HT, okay, to get maximum HT, you must have the inlet flow that has alpha 1 equal to 90 degrees. And when alpha 1 equal to 90 degrees, your velocity triangle is going to look something like that. So that's just the velocity triangle for the maximum theoretical pressure head. And what happens when cos alpha 1 equal to 0? So you will end up with a simpler form of HT, which is now simply U2 V2 cos alpha 2 divided by G. Now let's take a look at this term, right? V2 cos alpha 2, where is it? Okay, I think V2 cos alpha 2 is here. Okay, V2 cos alpha 2 is VT2. Okay, and VT2 is also, if you notice, VT2, VT2 is also U2, okay, which is the entire distance of this, minus this bit here, right? So this is U2 minus Vn2 cot beta 2. So Vn2 cotangent beta 2 will equal to this distance, right? And U2 minus this distance will give you Vt2, okay? And if I take this and copy it, Q 
here okay and remember that vt2 is actually v2 cos alpha 2 so if i replace this with this term i'm going to get u2 times u2 minus vn2 cotangent beta 2 divide by g and if i simplify it further that's going to be u2 square over g minus u2 vn2 cot beta 2 over g now if you notice that you manage to find this equation you manage to find this relationship because you know how to use and manipulate the velocity triangle so this comes back to my point in the last video where you must know how to use the velocity triangle you must know how to draw it you must know how to label it and you must know how to manipulate the mathematical terms inside that triangle a triangle is just a triangle when you have the 90 degree angle inside the triangle then it opens all sorts of possibilities so you can find any distance you can find any angle as long as you know the trigonometric of the triangle okay now we have a new term relatively new term which is vn2 and if i draw the impeller in a 3d manner right so the impeller will look something like this right it has the thickness okay it has the thickness it's like a it's like a very thin cylinder right so this is the impeller blade okay this is the impeller blade So that's the blade. Okay, and this is the outlet, and this is the inlet. And if you notice, V and two in our velocity triangle is actually the velocity that is perpendicular to the surface of the outlet, right? So V and two is actually moving perpendicular to this surface, right? This surface and VN2 is moving outward. Okay, so this is your VN2. That's your VN2, right? It's going outward of this surface. Right? So now, if I want to find the Q, if I want to find the flow rate, okay, you know that flow rate is velocity times area. Okay, and velocity is VN2 because it is perpendicular to the area. And the area that we are dealing with now is this area. Okay, this area it is the side of the cylinder right so this area is 2 pi r times b where b is the thickness of the impeller isn't it right so q is equal to v and 2 times 2 pi r times the thickness of the impeller which we usually call b right so v and 2 is simply q over 2 pi r times b and of course this is r2 and b2 because we because we were using vn2 if it's an inlet so vn1 will equal to q over 2 pi r1 b1 and let me just rewrite this equation so ht is equal to u2 square over g minus u2 vn2 cotangent beta 2 divided by g Right, and U2 is basically omega times R2, right? The rotational speed multiplied with the radius, then you get the velocity. And if I want to replace that, and I want to replace this as well into this equation, what I'm going to end up with is actually omega square R2 square over G minus omega R2 times Q cotangent beta 2 divided by 2 pi r2 b2 g okay so r2 can be cancelled out and if i want to make this equation look a bit clean so this is omega 2 r2 square over g minus omega cotangent beta 2 divided by 2 pi b2 g times Q and this is equal to HT and a single pump must have a constant radius right and if it's running at constant speed as well I can assume that all this becomes a constant so this is A 
0 minus this becomes a constant as well a1 times q so basically this equation end up to be ht equal to a0 minus a1 q so basically if i plot this ht against q right so ht against q right and it's going to start with here a0 and it has the slope of a1 and if i'm going back to this equation Okay, and I want to plot the effect of B2, right? The blade angle at exit. Okay, so what happens to my graph? And let me plot this properly this time. So this is HT versus Q. And of course, it's going to start with A1 here. Sorry, of course, it's going, of course it's going to start with A0 here, right? So what happens to the graph? Let's say my B2 is 90 degrees and cotangent B2 is 0. Okay, so no matter where am I in terms of Q, the graph will always be a flat curve. So this happens when beta 2 equal to 90 degrees, right? And if my beta 2 is higher than 90 degrees, what happens to the curve? So the curve will become a positively sloped curve, right? So this is beta 2 greater than 90 degrees because cotangent beta 2 that is greater than 90 degrees will give you negative values so the slope will go upward and if you have the beta 2 that is less than 90 degrees of course the slope will be downward okay and let's take a look at our figure again what is beta 2 actually right and beta 2 is the angle between v2 and also u2 and beta 2 is also called the blade angle at exit right so beta 2 is also called the blade angle at exit what this means is that if the blade angle at exit is greater than 90 degrees this is when we call the forward curve blade forward curve blade right and if beta 2 is less than 90 degrees at exit this is called the backward curve blade. And looking at this graph, okay, when beta 2 is greater than 90 degrees, which is the forward curve blade, usually what happens in a forward curve blade is that the flow will become unstable very quickly. So that means that this line is usually not useful. Okay, this line is not commonly used in the industry okay but if the blade angle at exit is less than 90 degrees meaning this line okay the flow inside this line the flow inside this pump is stable so this is generally preferred when you design a pump okay that is to use the backward curve blade with beta 2 less than 90 degrees but the problem is the higher you go in terms of the flow rate, the lower the theoretical pressure rise. So that is the trade-off between stable flow and also the theoretical pressure head. Okay guys, so I think this is a lot to take in. So please make sure that you can do this by yourself. Uh, if you have any question, please leave a comment below. And that's it for now. And we will do a tutorial after this. Okay, thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.